normal distributions. And normal distributions pretty much means what you might have heard as the bell curve or uh, the normal curve. And oftentimes they're portrayed as symmetric graphs. And we call them, Aaron, shut up. We call them density curves. And in a density curve, when you're talking about a population, they use the symbol mu. That's where you see this mean thing here. And the standard deviation is sigma. That's that little circle thing with the line off to the right. And one of the first things you probably should know about density curves is that they have inflection points. Inflection points, for those of you who are taking calculus, are where you change concavity. And on our density curves, that is one standard deviation away from the mean. So you'll notice in each of these curves, we're concave down in the middle. And then afterwards, we're concave up on either side. Okay, so standard deviation is where the inflection points occur. You might recall from Algebra 2, back when we talked about that, that there is a special rule uh, called the 68-95-99.7 rule. 68% of our observations or data will fall within one standard deviation. 95% of the observations fall within two standard deviations. And 99.7% of our observations fall within three standard deviations. On the AP exam, they talk a lot about this rule. It's kind of an important concept. It's pretty easy to find certain things. And so what I like to do is, in addition to that, is to realize what this means as far as numbers go. So for example, if I know that 68% of my observations are falling within one standard deviation, and I draw a vertical line from the mean up to the top of the density curve, that means that there is 34% in each of these regions. 34% one standard deviation to the right, 34, one to the left. Why? Bless you, because there is 68% of my data within one standard deviation. Within two standard deviations, since there's 95%, if I take 95 minus 68, I know that that is an additional 27% left over. That means that in the next two regions, if I split that in half, I'm going to have 13.5% in each of those regions. And then that's because, again, I have 95% of my data within 95, or sorry, within two standard deviations of my mean. And then the last part, 99.7. If I take the 99.7 and I subtract off the 95, I have 4.5%, or sorry, 4.7%, which means in the remaining two sections between two and three standard deviations, I'm going to have 2.35%. So in this region right here, I have 2.35, and over here I have 2.35. Why? Because in between negative 3 and 3, or within three standard deviations, I have 99.7% of my data. And I just think it's important to understand that when they talk about the 68, 95, and 99.7, they're talking about around the mean, centered at the mean. So you have to know that you can split those pieces in half when they're asking you questions. So an example is we have the distribution of heights of young women from 18 to 24. It's normal with a, with a mean of 64.5 inches and a standard deviation of 2.5 inches. So we're going to use a 68, 99.7 rule to answer the following questions. Now you might find it very helpful if you were to draw a density curve. And on this density curve, you can put the different pieces. For example, you can put as your mean 64.5. And I know that one standard deviation later, 
I'm going to go 2.5 on either side. So this is going to be 67. And if I take off 2.5, that's 62. I can go another standard deviation past that. So add another 2.5. So that's 69.5. Take off 2.5, that's 59.5. And then since I'm talking about the 68, 95, 99.7, I do another 2.5. And my last standard deviation that they usually talk about if I add 2.5 is 72. And then on this end, it would be 57. And that helps me to see what they're talking about with these rules. Because I know it's the 68, 95, 99.7. So then part A says, what percent of the women are taller than 69.5? And I know that I have two standard deviations and beyond to get that. So what would you get? 2.35. Yeah. yeah. Just kidding. Plus another point one five. Oh, okay. Sorry. So this question is talking about what's going on here. Remember that if knowing that when you're talking about within three standard deviations that we only talk about 99.7% of the material, that means there's 0.3 left over. That means after three standard deviations, if you take that 0.3 and split it, on the tails, <clears throat> way off on the end, you're going to have 0.15 on either end. So don't forget about that 0.15. So when they ask in A, what's the probability <clears throat> that your values are more than 69.5, you have to realize that you're talking beyond the third standard or beyond the second standard deviation. So we have the 2.35 in that little section plus the 0.15 for a grand total of 2.5%. Be careful that you answer what they're asking. They use the word percent, answer in a percent. Okay, so looking at part B, <coughs> it says that I want heights between, in the middle 68%, so that means one standard deviation from 62 to 67. This is asking me the question, what's the probability that my values are going to fall between 62 and 67 for the heights? And I know that in there, you the oh, I just answered the question, sorry. So I would say between 62 and 67 inches. And then the last one says, what percent of the women are between the heights of 57 and 67 inches? So that's from three standard deviations below the mean to one standard deviation above the mean. If you're writing this out, and adding up the different percentages in our second to third standard deviation, there was 2.35. In our next standard deviation, there was 13.5. And then there was another 68, because that's the rule for one standard deviation. And if you add it all up, you get 83.85, thank you, 85%. Again, make sure you answer in the manner that they want. They want the percentage. This next part right here where it says standard normal distribution is really about notation and that's it. And what you need to know is whenever you see this, they're talking about a normal curve. So we've been talking about these density curves and the word N means that you're normal. Okay? And everything that we'll try to do in this course is gonna try to make any kind of data that we talk about like women's heights, men's weights, shoe size, whatever, to look like a normal curve because that's really where we can do our statistics. The zero means that the mean is zero, so you'll know that I am zero deviations away from the middle. That's what it is. So in our case, when we're looking at women's heights, that zero would have corresponded to the 64.5 for the height of the women. And then after that, you'll look at, and all you'll see on this curve is ones, twos, and threes talking about how many standard deviations we are away from the mean, whether it's in the positive direction to the right or the negative to the left. And I told you, I think, yesterday that kind of the cool thing about statistics is it could take any data and normalize it. 
which is what this notation is talking about with the zero and the one. So I can take these women's heights, and I can change all of these heights into zeros, ones, twos, and threes. And it doesn't matter what data we're talking about, we can turn any data into that. And so that's why they use this notation, because we're going to change everything into normal notation. Everything. Down below is the formula on how to do that. We talked about that yesterday, I believe. It's called a z-score. We're going to use these z-scores to do some problems. And this is a very important formula. It's probably the most important formula in statistics. Z equals x minus mu over sigma. Okay, again, talking about a population. Down below, you'll see a picture of a curve. And we're going to look at our table in just a moment and talk about what's going on in our table. When you look at your table, the tables are talking about proportions, percentages, probabilities, area, whatever you want to call it, out of those four things we talked about yesterday, under the curve, below the number they're talking about. That's super, super important. It's to the left or below. So I would definitely highlight this thing right here. So all of this stuff that you see shaded is talking about the amount of data that is below whatever number they give you. Super important. Questions? Yay, two thirds of the way done. Here comes the math. <laughs> <laughs>